Hey guys, it's May May, and it is time to get started on our envelope mini album. What I thought I'd do is really quick go through some of the big supplies we're going to be using, and then um, we'll talk about the others as we get going. So here's a couple things I'm going to be using. One is my wide sticky tape that I get from Jamie at Punch Plays Plus. By the way, I'll put a link to everything below so you guys can pick this up if you need it. So we're using the wide one, and I may even use the thinner ones, but I know I'll be using this guy. I'll be using these envelopes. These are the ones I get, and again, I'll put a link. Um, the ones I found online are not exactly the same brand, but they are the same size, so we'll use those. And I'm going to be using this card sketchbook. I've already showed you this if you saw the intro video to this mini album, and I'll link that video below too. We'll be using this book. And for paper, I've had this Graphic 45 paper for a while. I got this from Punch Place Plus, and I'm going to use this Bohemian Bazaar, which I have wanted to use forever. And I just think these colors are perfect for spring. So I'll be using this guy, and there'll be a link for that at Jamie's store. And my favorite glue in the world, which is my art glitter glue, and it has the um, little fine tip on it. There'll be a link for that as well as some good old-fashioned duct tape. And I'll see if I can find something for that. Um, this album we're going to make is going to use these envelopes. This is going to be what we make our pages out of. And I'm going to try my best to show you how to make it very sturdy. That's the plan for this one because these envelopes, if this is, becomes your page and this is the bend of your page, that can be very flimsy over time. So we're going to do a lot of things to reinforce it and make it real sturdy. Now then, let's get started. We're, I'm going to be using my slot binding method that I like for the binding. If you already understand the slot binding method and you don't need to know that, you can skip forward if you want to, or you can watch it again just for a refresher course. But we're going to use the slot binding, and I've already created this page. And what I want to do is show you the finished product we're going for before I start the set, because I think it'll make more sense, okay? So what I want to show you here is I have this flap here that will be what actually goes into our slot and the envelopes themselves are going to create that okay and then if you notice here this opens so we have two envelopes that will be pages all right and then this is sealed shut i sealed that down and i'll show you why but this is and i'm going to call this for lack of a better word a signature so this will make sense this is one signature of our book okay so i've made two of these already i wanted to kind of master this before I showed you guys how to do it. Now, I came up with this. I, I have not watched anyone do this or use this method before. I just wanted to try this and see how it'll work. So, I mean, if somebody else has done it, I've not seen it. This is my method, okay? So, not the slot binding part, just the building of the signature. I found the slot binding from another lady, and I'll link her video, too. A lot of links in this one, so y'all be looking. Okay, the first thing we're going to do before we do anything else is we're going to remove this adhesive here, or expose that adhesive. And I'm going to take my sticky tape, that's the wide sticky tape, okay? And I'm going to run it on top of that piece that I just just released and just put some sticky tape here at the top. This is the first part of our reinforcement, okay? I really want this to be nice and sturdy, and I'll show you how that's going to help us in a minute. The next thing we want to do is we want to score this guy. And I'm going to use my bigger scoreboard because these envelopes are just slightly too big for my small scoreboard. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to score this flap or this envelope at six and a half inches. So I've put the square side in, the flap is out, and we're actually just scoring the flap, but it's six and a half inches from the far side. Okay, so that's where I'm scoring that piece. Now I can fold it on that score line and crease it. Okay. Now what I want to do is release this sticky tape, release this back, uh, take the backing off of this adhesive, okay? So now under here we have the envelope adhesive and the sticky tape adhesive, all right? This is going to get tucked in to our envelope. So you just want to close that down, lift up one side, lift up the other, and then you're going to seal this down just like that. Here's why, okay? I'm going to flip this over. This is the original bend of your envelope, okay, which we're going to use to our advantage. But I was afraid if I didn't reinforce that, then it would weaken over time and rip out of our book. By adding that adhesive on top of this flap, we've created much sturdier area for it to bend and fold, and that's going to hold up much longer. We basically put two different adhesives on top of that fold. Now what we're going to do is put this guy into our scoreboard, 
and at five and three quarters we're going to score. Now this is actually the fold of the envelope, the original fold. Okay, I'll flip it over and show you that we basically just reinforced that score that was already there. And now you can fold this down and crease it in place. And we're going to crease this one a good bit in a couple of times, but for now I'm just going to do this and just kind of get it out of our way for a minute. Now it's time to add the second envelope, and this is super easy. Now, remember, we tucked that flap underneath. Remember this? We tucked it under. There's a reason. We need this to be open, okay? Because for this envelope, we're going to release it, and we're going to stick it right inside of that flap, or right inside the envelope, and we're going to let those corners touch. So we're putting this envelope in as far as it will go and still seal down. So I'm going to shut it down and then seal that adhesive. Alright, let me tell you. The reason I did not add more adhesive to this one is because this is going to get an extra bit of adhesive in this area. So I'm not really worried about that. Okay, so we have a pocket now here and a pot, not really a pocket. We have these envelopes here for us and this one is sealed down and all this will make sense as we get going. Okay, so you stuck that in there and then you have this openness. I don't want this to be open. I want that to be sealed shut. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to seal it shut. I'm going to use my wet glue for this, okay? And notice what I did. I took a straight pen, and I'm always losing my straight pen, so I just put some little, like, flower sequins on the end, a yellow one and a blue one on the end, so that way I can find my pen. I won't lose it now. I'm always losing it. All right, so I'm going to take this glue. This is the fine tip, and I'm just going to run a bead of glue inside of here. A couple of reasons. I don't want to use sticky tape, because this is going to be a pocket that will hold, like, a tag, and if I use sticky tape, it'll never dry. And so the tag can always stick to it, and that's not what we're looking for. So I've got that there. I'm just going to seal that into place. Seal that shut. Now I'm going to do another one with you, because I feel like that's probably not enough. That one time showing you. Good. Now that I've got that sealed into place, I'm going to go ahead and work this back and forth. Because this is really our hinge. These envelopes are creating the hinge for us. Isn't that cool? I think it is. All right, move that one out of the way, and let's do another one. So we'll take the first envelope, and I'm using eight envelopes because I'm going to have four signatures, okay? I'm going to release this sticky, put down some new sticky. This tape is the 20 centimeter tape on Punch Place Plus. I had somebody ask me that. That's a really good question because I've never even mentioned that. I don't think that when you look on her website, these are actually in centimeters, so it's good to know. I've got my tape on, and now I need to score this at six and a half inches. And I want to show you something. I'm using my ball score tool on this paper because it's so thin. If I use one of these guys, I typically do it too hard and rip through. And I love this with this wider ball tool. Tool I get a better score on light paper that way. So if you're wondering why I'm using a different one, that's why. There is a method to my madness for that one. It just works better. It doesn't seem to go into the hole and kind of cut the paper. Okay, fingernails. There we go. All right, I'm going to lift this guy up, tuck this guy under, and tuck this guy under. Be very careful here because you can get a paper cut pretty easy. Experience, right? <laughs> now I'm going to score back here on that very same score line, which is five and three fourths. It's the same original fold line. And I'm going to flip it over and do the other side too just so that both sides can be scored. All right, so this is ready to fold. I'm just gonna get it out of my way like I did before. Forward and back. Okay, now we can put our other envelope in. This is where it gets really easy. We just release that sticky. Stick this in as far as it will go. Just let them touch. It won't, you know, when it won't go any further in, you know you're in the right place. There we go. Okay. And then just seal that together. Shut that down. Fold this guy over. So now we have hinges and pockets and all that good stuff. Now before I go ahead and put these into my binding system, I want to open these bottoms up, okay? Because these are going to be pockets on all of these guys. So I'm going to move my scoreboard. Oh, I forgot to seal this one down. 
See, I heard y'all yelling at me. Don't forget to seal it. So put some glue in here on the edge. And seal this shut. And I'm doing just a little bitty bead because I don't want it to block whatever tag I put in there. I want the tag to fit really well. All right, so now they're ready to go. Let's move this out of the way. And bring my paper cutter over and close my glue up. I think this is going to help me a lot because I lose my pen for my glue all the time. But see that? I will not lose it. I'll know it's there. All right, let's put these guys in. And you can do them separately or together. Now, because it's very hard to get perfect folds and perfect lineups and things like that, I'm going to do them separately because that way I know I'm only taking a tiny bit off of each one. So using your, um, your cutting tool, good Lord, what is this called? Using your paper trimmer, you want to just slide that slightly past your cutting mark. So whatever your cutting mark is, you're going to take off. I'll show you how much I'm taking off. You're just taking off enough to open that envelope. That's not even an eighth of an inch. It's very tiny, more like a sixteenth. So there's that one. So we're just opening those pockets. This will make so much more sense as we get going. If you've ever made an envelope mini before, you'll know what this is doing. It's just opening these outer sections. So see, now we have these sections open so we can slide things in there and they become pockets. Okay, now I'm going to do that on all of them. Now, while I'm doing this, I want to talk to you about this. You don't have to use this size of envelope. This is just the one I wanted to use because I had these in my stash. I have This is actually what I send my stamp sets out in when someone purchases a stamp set from my Etsy store. So, I thought I'd use these because I have plenty of them. And I also wanted to try this method. I, um, I tossed this around in my head over and over and over trying to decide if I thought it was really going to work, this binding. And I'm anxious to see, because I haven't tested this. We're doing this together. So I did create the uh, first two signatures just to make sure my theory was going to work <laughs> of the folds and things to get that flap to be kind of natural so I didn't have to put an extra flap in. So let's do this last one. I hope it works, because I think it'll be super neat if it does. If it doesn't, you will have watched this entire video for me to have to redo it. <laughs> No, I won't do that to you. I'll edit before. I'll start over before you have to watch it. Alright, so I got this guy cut. Got a little sloppy on that one. Trying to hurry. Let's do that again. Alright, so these guys are all open. So we've got our binding flaps, we've got multiple pages, and we have them open where they can be pockets, and we will slide tags into the end. So this album is going to do this. It'll be a page, okay? It'll be pockets, and if we want to add anything else, we have plenty of place to do it inside of here. We can even go in and add another flap in the middle if we want to. You have lots of places to add flaps. You can add them to the outside, and we may do that as we go along, but for now, our pages are built. Now we got to do that binder. Now I believe that drawing this binding system out for you is going to be easier than me just telling you. But I want to start by saying this. These are our signatures, okay? This one piece is two pages. When I go to decorate this, I'm not going to have any room here for dimension on the inside. So I want to leave myself room for dimensional pieces on both outsides of this book. So when I bind these together, if I were to take these and just stick them into the binder like this, there's no room between them for dimensional pieces. And if I put dimensional pieces in, this is what your book's going to do. Let me see if I can make this happen. If I put thick pieces in, your book will have a thin bind binder, but it's not going to sit flat. It's going to sit up. Okay? We don't want to do that. We want to make room for things to fit in there. So here's what we're going to do. I have decided I want to add one quarter of an inch between each one of these. And we're going to pretend like my fingers are a quarter of an inch. Okay? So I want one quarter of an inch between each page. Now see how much dimension I have? And I can add thicker embellishments with this. Well, I also want my covers to be that quarter of an inch away as well. So I have a quarter of an inch, and then here, and here, and here, and on the outside. So when we do our math for our binding piece, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to draw it. Here's what I mean. We have our page number one. So that's our first slice in our slot binding. 
We're going to move over a quarter of an inch and have page number two. Move over a quarter of an inch and have page number three. Another quarter of an inch is number four. Because remember, we only have four signatures. Even though there's two pages on each one, it's just four signatures. Then I'm going to need another quarter of an inch so that my binding, or so that my covers, will be a quarter of an inch away. Now I want to attach this slot binder to my covers. So I want to come out about half an inch on either side to give myself a flap to attach. This will all make sense as we get going. Now then, we're going to met we're going to do the measurement here. So I have a half an inch and then 1/4 one 1/4 fourth, one 1/4 fourth, one fourth, one fourth, and 1 half. Now we're going to add those up. So I have half, that's 3 quarters, 1, 1 and a quarter, 1 and a half, 1 and 3 quarters, 2 and a quarter. So my slot binding piece needs to be 2 and 1 quarter wide. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And as we go, just follow along. This will make sense. For height, all I need to do is measure the height of my envelopes, and I'm going to add a quarter of an inch to each side so that I can have a little hangover of my covers. Okay? So my envelopes are how tall? I will, you will get to know these measurements as you go. Eight and three quarters. So I want to add a half an inch to that, so I have a quarter inch on each side. So for height, I will be nine and one fourth. Okay, so I need two and a quarter by nine and one fourth for my slot binder. Let's do that. Now I've gone into my scrap drawer and I pulled out this piece of paper that matches the paper pad I'm going to use. And I'm going to trim this down to two and one quarter. Look at your measurements all the time. Always check them. It's better to check, check, and recheck before you cut. So two and one quarter here. And then I need it to be nine and a quarter long. Remember I told you I wanted to talk to you about making these really sturdy? I'm going to use some duct tape on this to make this a super sturdy piece. And so, this piece, this edge of my duct tape is kind of messy. I'm going to stick this down to my board and cut that away. I'm just going to go right here and just cut to make that a little bit neater. Okay. And now then, oh, it's stuck to my hand. Get it off of me. Now I'm going to cover this little strip with the duct tape. I'm going to take my time here. It's not going to be seen, so if you get some wrinkles, it's not a big deal. Because it's going to be on the inside, but we know it's there and it's going to be nice and sturdy. Seal that down. Give myself a little extra so I can cut that away. And then, push that down. I'm going to do the same thing one more time. I know that was loud, sorry. And I'm going to stick this down. And then stick it to the edge of the paper. All the way down. I'm having to lean over to see it. Okay. Now, I'm doing this because I want it to be really sturdy. Because if the pages are going to be held in this, our signatures will be held in this, and I want to make sure that they're there for a long time and that they are good and sturdy. So I'm putting this on the back of the binding piece, and I'm going to flip it over so you won't see it. I got a little bit hanging off, so I'm going to clean that up a little bit. Well, I'll say I am. If my blade was sharp at all, there we go. <laughs> all right, now it is time to do our measurements for our slot binder. Okay. I'm going to come down one quarter of an inch. I'm going to use my cutting mat to help me with this because I have the marks for it. I'm going to come down a quarter of an inch and make a mark just with my pencil. Okay. So, get this lined up straight. That's a quarter of an inch. Okay. I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the end. Remember, we left that quarter of an inch so that our cover would hang over slightly of our pages. There's another quarter of an inch. Now I need to make lines showing where all the pages are going to go. This is where we're going to use that drawing again. We're basically going to recreate this drawing on here. Let's see what I'm going to do this side first. So I'm going to use my, I've lined it up on my cutting mat here. Let me move it where you guys can see it better. Lined it up on my cutting mat. Use my ruler, put it on the half inch mark. Just like this. 
Okay, and I'm going to mark that line. That's not one we'll cut. That's just one we're marking. Now I'm going to do it on this other side too, another half inch in. Because remember, we save that to be flaps to adhere that to our book. Okay. Now we need to measure, we need to mark every quarter of an inch on the inside. So what I'm going to do is come up here to make this easy because my cutting mat does not show me quarters of an inch. I'm going to come in here and mark those quarter of an inch marks just with my pencil. I know it's hard for you guys to see, but I promise I'm making those marks. <laughs> I'm going to flip it around and do it on this end as well. Quarter inch. All right. Now then, I'm going to draw lines from those, from one mark to the next. All right, I'm going to bring this up. I had to do some erasing and some fidgeting, but these lines in the middle are a quarter of an inch apart, and these are half inch from the edge, okay? This is what's going to create our slot binding. Now I'm going to use my hole punch, and I'm going to use my crocodile, and I'm going to use the smaller hole for this one, okay? And what you're going to do, this is where we can get confusing, is where the four in the middle, not this outside line, but the one, two, three, four, where we're going to put our pages through, cross over, we want to put a hole there. So I'm going to hold this where you can see it and I can see it, and then I'll bring it up to the camera so you can really see it. And I'll tell you the reason for this hole as we get going. Okay, so where those lines intersect, I've put a hole in that little intersection, and I'm going to do that at every one of them. So I've done that one. Now I'm going to come in here and do the next one right next to it. Then the next one. I'll bring this up and show you once I get it finished. Remember, only the four lines in the middle. I just love how neat and clean this binding is when it's finished. So you see how we've done that? Now we're going to do the other side. Four in the middle, not those outside lines because those are just for folding in a little bit. So you can see where our pencil marks cross over, there are now four holes. The reason for these holes, if you don't put these here when you're using your X-Acto knife, you don't have a start and stop point and you can get messy with your lines. So those holes create the neatest little spot for you to use your knife. Now we're going to go back and line our ruler up with our pencil marks that go all the way down the page. Start in that hole at the top, cut down and end in that hole in the bottom. And it just gives you a great place to stop so you get cut all the way through and you have a stopping point. Okay, I'm going to do that on the next one. This binder can seem really, really difficult until you do it. And then it makes sense. You have to work this one. I have to go all the way through this one for it to make sense. So keep watching if you're lost. And don't forget we've got that duct tape back there, so you're having to go through both of those layers. Let's do the next one. If you don't have duct tape, if you have some of that Tyvek, um, you can use that. That's like the... Um, post office envelopes or the FedEx envelopes that are really, really thick, you can use that if you've got it. Anything to make your slot sturdier. Okay, we are getting there. Yep, that's all the way through. All right, now check it out. We have this one, this one, this one, and this one. We have four areas. I'm going to do this. See what we've created? One, two, three, four. So our, our pages will now go through here. All right, let's get those ready to insert. So here's what's going to happen. This flap is going to slide into these binding areas, this binding area. You see how that works? And you're going to stick this down. But here is the trick, okay? Very important that you do this. You are not going to put this score line directly on. Let me bring you guys in. All right, this is the important part. Do not put your score line all the way to that hinge. If you do, you will not get an easy page turn. See how tight that is? You want that score line to be outside of it. Even if it's outside about an eighth of an inch, it's better 
than having it right on it because now look how I can turn it and I don't get as much resistance okay so let's get these ready by putting some adhesive on this side this may be a little too wide it is I'm gonna use a thinner one I told you I might use a thinner adhesive from time to time so I'm gonna use this guy just gonna run it down here and I really don't think you want to use a wet glue or even a hot glue for this area in my opinion that would take forever because you're going to have to hold that in place. You really do want a really strong sticky tape for this. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the first one in so you guys can see me do that. All right, so now we're sticky on there. We're going to stick this guy through. And what I'm going to do is stick it through this way. That way it will not overlap into my other folds and it won't close those slots down. So you're going to put your first one in facing the outside portion. Okay? And you can even line it up right on that edge. That works perfect. I'll bring this to you and let you see it. But now we can crease this like crazy. So crease, crease, crease. And because I did not lay this right on that score line, you can see once I adhere that down, the page is going to flip really easy. Okay, so here's the top, stuck through that first binder, and here's the back. And it's adhered down to that first section. Okay, let's do the next one. Now what I'm going to do for the next one is I'm going to flip this page over, and this one is going to go in the same direction. Okay, the reason for that is if you don't do it this way, you can end up with um, an overlap where it closes off the slot next to it and that's not what we want to do because we didn't make these flaps a quarter of an inch we only made the distance between them a quarter of an inch that will make more sense when you make your own and you may have to make a couple of these for this this slot binding to work for you it's just so clean and neat when it's finished the girl who I saw this from was Angel Wishes and I saw it a while back, and I thought, wow, what a clean, neat binder. All right. I'm going to zoom out a little bit for this one. So we're back so you can see the whole thing. And now this time, we're going to go into the second slot. Okay. So I'm going to feed this through that second slot we made. I'm going to line the pages up with each other. Okay. Sit that down a little bit. Make sure my pages are lined up, just like so. So now we're in there. You can see how easy that one's folding over. We need to crease this one down, just like this. Okay, so we're in. Now, you will notice that this piece is loose because it's not being stuck in some areas. So I'm just going to take my fine tip of my glue and run it under there and make sure it's stuck all the way down everywhere. And if you want to, you can add, you know, some dry adhesive back there if you feel like you need to. But I think that'll hold it in place just fine. All right, two signatures in. Let's do the next one. Now this one's going into the third slot. My tape is still stuck together at the top up here. Not getting a good open. There we go. So this one's going into the third slot here. And once we get it in there, you're going to want to line it up with that page before, leaving yourself some distance between the two. Go ahead and work your slot binding back in there because that one's kind of lifting up on me. Just like that. Check that slot binding. That one stuck really well. And now I can move this one over and seal it down or crease it down. All right, last one to go in. I hope it's starting to make sense to you now. It's pretty easy and it just looks so clean when you're done with it. You can use any kind of binding you want. This is just the one I like to use. So if you want to use the Stack the Deck or any of those that have been made famous by great mini album makers, you can use those no problem. If you've used this binding system before, tell me in the comments and tell me what you think. I just think they turn out neat and clean and I like them. All right, so we're opening up that last slot. We're going to put this piece in. 
lay this down, line them up, not pushing it too close to that little binding piece. Let me get that worked in there real quick. Don't want it too close because we want to be able to get a nice flat fold. Look how it's folding so flat. Watch that. Isn't that awesome? Look how flat it is. This is what I love. And then if you go this way, it still goes just as flat. That's the reason I love this binding system. So I'm going to sit it like this and open the pages. So see how it does? Isn't that pretty? It's so clean and it's so neat. It may take you a little longer, but you can feel confident in that. Now let's flip it over and look at this side. Now what I want to do, because again, I'm working with sturdiness. I want to make this very, very sturdy. I'm going to open these pages up in half so it'll lay flatter for me. I'm going to tuck. I'm going to lay that down flat like so. And now we're going to duct tape it again. This part is going to really hold it into place. All right, so I'm going to take this piece of duct tape. And I'm going to run it all the way down the length. Can you see how sturdy this is going to make it? I think it's going to be awesome. Cut this piece away. Like so. And I'm going to add another piece to this side. Oops, I didn't get that one on good. I'm going to lift that one up. Just like so that to lay down. Clean this end up. And then I'll clean this end up. Now I'm just going to take my bone folder and just really burnish that into place. Now I feel really good about these pages. I don't feel like they're going anywhere. I think we have reinforced them every single way we possibly can and we have them ready to go into our covers. Isn't that awesome? This is so ready to go and they are going nowhere. I love it. All right. I'm not going to um, do anything else to this right now. We're going to go ahead and build our covers. But if you're following along, we're going to stop here in this video. The reason is I want you to be able to get to this point and have your pages ready to go into the cover. And then in tomorrow's video, we'll start on the cover and you can install this in to your book. Okay, so get this far and then I will see you tomorrow. Have a great one, guys. Bye-bye.